What's up, YouTube? Northeast Ohio. Here for our weekly little check-in, chit-chat, whatever. Hope everyone had a nice, long holiday weekend. Ate a bunch of stuffing and turkey and whatnot. And did some online Black Friday shopping, whatever your thing is. Uh, took a few days off for making videos, but we are back at it today. So. A uh, little newsy stuff here at the beginning. Going to talk briefly on some football uh, and then dive into some basketball stuff and then get you guys out of here. Don't forget the YouTube nonsense down below. Like, comment, sub, all that jazz. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, this week, first thing we had was Prism first off the line 2020 football Dutch auction. Started at 2,000, sold out right around 1,000. Uh, I think it was like 1,100 or 10 something. I don't remember exactly, but uh, right around 1,100 to 1,000 bucks it sold out at. Um, I was watching it. I briefly considered pulling the trigger on a box or two if it dropped below 1,000. Uh, it did not get there, so I was saved from that. Uh, these get really tricky because even if you bought it for 1,000, I, I pulled up eBay here. Uh, and, you know, they're going for about 1500 to it looks like 1700 uh, and a little bit in between. Depending on where you bought in at, it's not it, it seems like, yeah, that's a really nice profit. But always remember, and especially if you're selling on eBay. So if you bought this for a thousand, you had to pay a tax through Panini, which was like 75 bucks, depending on where you live. Um, so that's almost 100 bucks gone right there. Then if you sell on eBay, you're losing 10 to 13 percent on that end, uh, you know, so that's another hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. So that's three hundred bucks right there. If you consider eBay fees and tax when you bought it, that you have to make up before you even make a profit. Now, if you're selling for sixteen or seventeen hundred, you're going to make a few hundred bucks. You're pretty safe there. I personally, now nah, there hasn't been any breaks or anything of this product yet because it hasn't shipped yet due to Thanksgiving. I'll be curious to see how it does. I did watch some people on YouTube break retail uh, 2020 blasters and, and cellos and all that jazz, which has started to hit the market uh, in a few places. I think it has not hit Walmart yet. It's mostly been targets from what I've been able to see. Um I think next week is when it hits in mass. I think the holiday week this week really screwed up a lot of that stuff. Um, but I think we really start seeing it in retail stores big next week. Now, if you could find it for retail, I think it's a pretty good, you know, it's a good rip or it's a good flip, whatever you want to do with it. I'm not going to hate if you uh, uh, buy a bunch of it and then just sell it sealed. That's probably the safest thing to do with it, honestly. Um Singles aren't loaded into market movers yet or anything. Uh, I looked at a few things. Burroughs going for about 100 and some. Herbert's going for around 200. Uh, that's just base. I would expect those to come down quite a bit as inventory floods the market. Um, this product comes out at a weird time because Burrow basically just lost his leg uh, the day before first off the line hit Dutch auction. I don't think it's going to impact things too much, but when one of the stars of the class is immediately going to be out for a year and a half, uh, that's not too great. So um, on the secondary market, blasters right now are selling for about 110 to 120 bucks, $20 blasters. So they're going for about 4X. Uh, I would expect those prices to come down slightly once the uh, inventory floods the market here in the next few weeks as people start buying out stores and whatnot those prices will creep down just supply and demand uh, and then it'll dry up and then creep back up again. It'll probably follow the same pattern where they shake out out at who knows. Um, I, they are not a good rip for 110 to $120 a piece. There is no chance in hell you will catch me paying that. Am I going to go look for prism retail myself personally? If I'm out and about and I happen to be by one of the targets on the days that I know that they stock, I'll pop in, but I'm not going to make it a point to go look for this stuff. I am pretty much retired from the retail hunting game. Um, the competition is fierce and I'm not waiting in line for hours to get two blaster boxes. So, you know, if I luck into some, so be it. 
uh, but I am not going to be going crazy for it. Um, you know, when I was in my prime, like uh, mosaic basketball, um, I was hitting it pretty hard, uh, but I don't see myself going crazy for this. If I find some, I will definitely buy it. Uh, and I will most likely, because I probably won't be buying in mass. Most of the stores around me have limits in place now. Whatever I buy, I will most likely just rip on the channel or maybe just set a couple aside to sit on for a while. I don't know yet. It depends on what I find. So, uh, but I would definitely not recommend paying 120 a blaster box. I'm not going to, once again, I'm not going to hate on someone for selling it on 120 a blaster box. To me, that crap gets annoying on Facebook when people are selling for what the market price is uh, and the Facebook warriors come out and attack them. It's not their fault what the market price is. If you don't like it, don't pay it. Uh, I don't like it. I won't pay it. I don't mind them selling it for that price. I'm not going to sit here and hate on someone for making money in this hobby. Uh, however, they can go about it. So it is what it is. You might not like it. Some people don't. That's fine. Uh, but I'm not going to blow a gasket about it one way or the other. So uh, that's the prism football spiel for right now. Uh, I'll be curious to see where prices do kind of fall out on sealed and also singles once more of it hits the market. So we'll probably dip in. Uh, and briefly touch on football a few times on these weeklies uh, once we get stuff in. Um, hobby boxes, first off the line, etc. What I've seen so far, it's a huge checklist, man. Prism usually is. There is a lot of random rookies in there. Uh, a lot of guys are in um, like workout clothes from the combine. So they're not in Jersey. There's a lot of offensive and defensive player, like offensive linemen and defensive linemen in there, et cetera. And those aren't guys you want to be opening. So it's really a mishmash product. The cards look nice. I think I'd be curious to see them in person. They look like they're easy to tell centering on, which is always a nice uh, plus. Uh, so we'll see how the market shakes out for those uh, and what happens. So we'll be keeping an eye on that over the next few weeks. I did want to briefly, I pulled up, uh, we're going to dive into market movers for the rest of this. Now we're going to talk about one more football thing and then get in the basketball quickly. Um, the one thing I wanted to touch on is I pulled burrow up on uh, market movers. And if you're interested in checking out market movers link below coupon code below in the description of this video, um, just to kind of see where his prices went since he got injured. And they actually haven't gone down that much. Uh, this is his base mosaic and base Don Russ. Uh, and they basically stayed flat. The mosaic came down about 10%. The Donruss went up 14%, but that's only two bucks because it's a pretty low value card to begin with. So these really haven't changed a ton. I'm kind of surprised by that. Now, I didn't look at like the higher end stuff. Uh, this stuff's pretty low end to begin with. So at about 20 and $15 a card, you know, a big swing. It, it takes a lot to really impact that. I didn't look at silvers or anything. There's just not a lot of graded inventory of this stuff yet because it is still so new. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening with his prices, and I'll be curious to see where his prism stuff shakes out at. Uh, to me, the interesting problem is him missing all of next year as well, uh, or most likely missing all of next year. You know, if he was just out the rest of this year and you knew he was going to be back playing next year, that's not that bad, but... It sounds like he's probably not going to play next year. I, you know, he's going to miss most of the season, and I don't see them bringing him back for the last couple games uh, of next season. So that's you're not talking about almost two years. You got to hold this guy's stuff. Um, you know, that's just a long time to buy singles and sit on them for that long. Um, the best buying opportunity for him price wise will actually probably be like during next season when he's the most forgotten about that being said, if I pulled something of his um, out of prison, I'd be very tempted to just sell it raw right now. Cause I do see the prices probably starting. Typically what happens is on these new releases is the prices start very high. Uh, then they drop down and then they go back up again. Uh, almost like clockwork, as long as the player plays well, of course. Um, I think you'd almost be better off if you open like a Burrow Silver, you know, tomorrow out of a blaster to immediately sell it. Maybe a silver you would grade, but like a base card, probably immediately sell a, a Burrow base 
and wait like a year and then you could probably rebuy it back at half of you know what you sold it for if not even uh six months from now uh and then buy it and grade it or whatever so i'll be curious to see how that stuff shakes out but uh, so i just kind of wanted to briefly touch on the borough market as current stuff hasn't really changed that much which was a little bit surprising to me uh but the lower value stuff has less fluctuation in it to begin with so um let's hop over in the basketball when we're talking about people going down I did kind of want to circle back and check in on Clay Thompson. Just curious to see where he sat. Um, and I'm not going back uh, just seven days on this one. I went back all the way to early November just to see what happened. And this is his PSA 10 and nine base prism. Uh, the PSA 10 is down about 35% and the PSA nine is down almost 50%. Uh, and I probably consider, I probably see these. It looks like, uh, the PSA 10 maybe has flattened out a little bit, but I have a feeling that these continue to come down um, as we build up to this coming season. People will want to move that money into things uh, that they can flip, et cetera. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck holding tr uh, clay for essentially a whole nother year, uh, and then you don't even know what that's going to look like coming off an Achilles and uh, an ACL tear missing two complete years. So. Uh, but just kind of wanted to briefly check in on the old Clay Thompson market to see what he is doing these days. Uh, all right, let's hop into the meat and bones basketball. The biggest one by far, and we don't have a ton of stuff to talk about. I didn't pull as much stuff since we have, we talked a little bit of football at the beginning of this one. Um, Trey Young is by far and away the hottest player in the market right now, and it is honestly not even close. There's one other player probably that's rivaling him, but not as much as Trey Young. Trey, base prism, and I pulled this over uh, a 14-day period just to kind of show a better picture of this. Um, everything is up about 20 to 30%, or 15 to 30%, basically. Uh, his base prism's up 30%. His optic is up 15%. His hoops is up 30%. His based on Russ is up 15%. On this graph or this chart, it's showing the select is flat. That is not actually currently true. There just hasn't been sales in a couple of days. And I went at current and looked at current auctions and they're actually already selling for over these two prices. Uh, so they're probably going to end up at the same point. When I first pulled it, I thought maybe there's a buying opportunity on the select stuff. Um, and that does not appear to be the case. Uh, unless you find maybe just a straggler out there, but I didn't necessarily see that when I looked at the premiere and the concourse level for Trey. But Trey Young is by far and away the hottest name right now. His stuff is going crazy. His base prisms all the way up to 700 bucks. And I could easily see this getting over a thousand early in the season if he comes out like gangbusters. So. Hawks have been the offseason darlings. They brought in all the guys. Um, and he has a ton of hype behind him. The interesting thing is, is most prognostication for what that's worth of the talking heads in the NBA world are thinking they're like a seventh or eighth seed at best, even with all the moves. So that's still no sure thing for the playoffs. But and I'll be curious to see what Trey numbers looks like with that many mouths to feed now. I've talked about it before. I do think this is bad news for Reddish and Hunter. I definitely got some pushback on that in the comments, but I just don't see how those guys are more than advanced role players at best on this team for the foreseeable future. So uh, unless they get, unless they're used as trade bait, which I don't know that they would do that. But yeah, Trey is driving everything right now. He is eclipsed not price wise, but in terms of like market hotness, um, he's jumped in front of Luca and whatnot just because of the new cycle, giving him a big boost. Um, so good luck if you could try to find some value still in trace stuff. Uh, it could still be out there. I didn't check like PSA nines and stuff on all these. Um, so uh, up next, and this is an interesting one. This is one I, I included a, a little bonus on here. There is a good buying opportunity on this one. Uh, and it's Tyler Hero. Uh, once again, I pulled a 14-day, or this is just a seven-day chart on this one, sorry. Uh, his PSA 10 has really been climbing lately, uh, base prism. It's up 20% on the week to almost 300 bucks. Uh, in the PSA 9, 
this is one of those instances where it is not followed yet. Uh, it is still going for around $80. Um, I've seen them sell for like, and I've been watching a few of these to, to see if maybe I could sneak in on one. Uh, they've been going for between 78 and like 85 bucks the last two days. Cause I noticed this the other day. Um, I think I noticed it on Thanksgiving day. Uh, and it, I almost made a video specifically about this, but I, I didn't want to flood the feed. Um, Cause I've been putting out a lot of videos lately. Uh, but it has maintained so far and I was watching a few and the market doesn't look like it's caught up to this yet. The PSA nines being only around 80. That's about 20 bucks too cheap at least. And I see his PSA 10 continuing to climb at some point in time, this nine's going to catch up in value. Um, Cause it usually should be right around three X and it's a little bit higher than that right now. Uh, it's at 3.77. Um, usually you want to see that around three to 3.5 is the right place to be. Um, so in my opinion, with the with the recent bump up in his PSA 10, uh, I believe that the nine should be following suit. And that has not happened yet. So if you're looking to get in a Tyler hero, uh, if you can find some PSA nines for, in my opinion, anything under 100 bucks, 80 to 90, especially. Uh, I would look to gobble those ones up if you're a believer in Tyler Hero. Um, next on the list, and I mentioned it earlier, there's only one other player that's just as hot as Trey Young, and that continues to be SGA uh, as his stuff has also gone bonkers. Uh, this is a 14-day chart on him. Um, here's the lines up there, but you can see both are trending up. This is his uh, prism and his optic PSA 10. His prism's up almost 60% in 14 days, uh, and his optic is up almost 30% in 14 days. So if you're looking to get on the shy bandwagon or the SGA bandwagon, um, the ship's kind of already left, but maybe you can hop on a PSA 10 optic. His stuff has really got inflated since uh, the Thunder went in the full sale mode. And, and we kind of predicted this. We talked about this before the NBA offseason that SGA had one of the best chances to blow up uh, based off of them kind of gutting the ship and him being the lone man standing there. So um, SGA is getting to the point, honestly, where. And I don't have a ton of them, but. I am probably going to potentially look to move some of my SGA stuff prior to the season. Uh, we'll get into the reasons of why in that here in a couple weeks. Uh, I am planning on making a video of players that I'd like to sell before the season actually starts. Um, but yeah, his prices are getting way up there and I just don't know. And I like him a lot. Do not get me wrong. Um, but he's really going to have to ball out to justify where his prices are headed towards. So I'm going to keep an eye on him and see where he ends up at prior to the season starting. Cause don't forget guys, this is all hunky dory right now. No one's playing. No one looks bad. No one's hurt. No one's on a COVID reserve list, et cetera, et cetera. That stuff's all about to happen here in a month. Um, and when that stuff starts happening, prices are going to start going down when these guys do not perform and other players are going to start going up. Um, so, Sometimes it's good just to lock the profit in before the season starts uh, and whatever happens, happens. So little thoughts there on some SGA action, uh, but his prices have been going absolutely crazy. Uh, and one going down, we don't talk about guys going down very often, but this time of year, it's kind of weird for players to go down. Something has to happen to negatively impact them. And there really hasn't been a lot of that other than some guys negatively impacted by off season moves like Jackson Hayes, et cetera. Uh, and that is, and this one hurts. This one really hurts. If you followed the channel for a while, uh, you know we have lots of love for Kevin Porter Jr. Uh, and that is old KPJ. Now, I actually think I already have a ton of KPJ, so I don't need a buying opportunity on him. Um, I have plenty already. I don't need any more that I bought for much, much cheaper than all of this. Um, so for those that don't follow the news, he got busted on a gun and marijuana charge. Uh, after he was in a traffic accident uh, about a week or so ago, not even a week or so ago. Uh, and I don't think it's that big of a deal. 
So the marijuana stuff is kind of, I mean, it's basically whatever uh, anymore. I don't see the NBA hitting him with anything. And people saw a gun charge and were like, oh, my God, a gun charge. Um, It's a pretty minor gun charge, guys. Uh, he was basically got charged for carrying a concealed weapon without a permit. Um, Ohio is a CCW state, so you can conceal carry here uh, with permits. And he just didn't have a permit. So like having a loaded gun on you in, in a car sounds bad, but it's actually illegal in Ohio if you're properly permitted. Now, he wasn't. So that's a thing. But it's not like this is a federal offense for what he did. It's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. So we'll see where it shakes out. But like, I don't see him like losing playing time over this or anything. So we'll see what happens. But personally, I'm still a believer in KPJ. I still think he's the best young player on that team over Garland and Sexton both. You know, and they got the new wing now. Uh, but he's more of a defensive player and, you know, love and Drummond and all those guys are just kind of taking up space. But uh, KPJ showed some real upside last year. And some of the people that I really like in the NBA industry that I listen to quite frequently on podcasts and whatnot also really like him. Uh, and I really liked what I seen out of him with my own two eyes. And I watch every Cavs game. Um, so for some reason, uh, even though they're not exciting to watch. Uh, but yeah, KPJ. You know, if you could pick his stuff up on the cheap, I wouldn't hesitate because he's one of the trendy guys. The hobby love. There's a portion of the hobby that loves KPJ. I don't know if people just like three letter nicknames. You got KPJ, MPJ, SGA, uh, and all those guys are buzzy. So if you could pick up some like KPJ Prism Silvers or something or like his PSA 10 going for most recent sale of 66 bucks, uh, that seems pretty cheap to me. So uh, if you don't have any KPJ and you've been looking to get into, this may have created a little bit of a buying opportunity. I don't know what his playing time is going to look like. I think they're going to let Garland try to, you know, feel this stuff out at the beginning of the season and see what happens. I think it's going to be a lot of Sexton, Garland, and KPJ is kind of like the sixth man off the bench. Uh, we will see on that, but... um. Yeah, I think there's a little buying opportunity on KPJ here. Like I said, I would be taking advantage of it, but I already have about 30 base prisms um, not graded uh, and a bunch of silvers and variations and all sorts of KPJ nonsense. So um, I, I do hope he comes back, but I, I think this is minor in the grand scheme of things. So uh, sorry for the longer one today, guys. I don't know what the record time is on this, but I feel like it went long because of the football talk and whatnot. But um, that's all I have for you guys today. So, you know, YouTube nonsense down below, like comment, sub. Um, I think the next video that I have planned is going to be a little, just a chit chat on buying and selling. Uh, it's not going to be about like what players I'm looking to sell, etc. It's just more about like some thought processes of buying and selling as we actually get closer and closer to this NBA season starting. So uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Catch you guys on the next one and peace.